New players, returning players, and long-time players often neglect mechanics in 7 Days to Die Alpha 20, so I've assembled a list of 7 mechanics, items, tips, and tricks that everyone should remember exists to make their playthrough that much easier. With that out of the way, remember to leave a like if you find this video helpful, and let's jump straight into 7 things you should use more in 7 Days to Die Alpha 20. Number 1 is for you returning players, Vehicle Mods. Alpha 20 added 5 new vehicle mods that you can use to improve your vehicles. The Fuel Saver makes you use 50% less fuel, the Fuel Tank lets you store 50% more fuel in the vehicle, the Supercharger increases your maximum boosting speed by 15% and your non-boosting max speed by 25% and yes that does mean it's still faster to use boost than not with the Supercharger and of course you have the expanded seating to get one more seat on your minibike or motorcycle or two more seats in your 4x4 and the off-road headlights to make up for the fact that your old withering eyes can't see as well anymore. My point is that there are now ways to improve the performance of your vehicle in 7 Days to Die and simply crafting the vehicle is only the first step. Keep an eye out for those new vehicle mods and use them to get an edge in your playthrough. Speaking of edges, number 2 is traps. Yeah, I don't think that was a good transition either. Traps have always been an important part of 7 Days to Die, but did you know that Alpha 20 made a couple of changes that made using traps even more important? First of all, the Fun Pimps made the robotic sledge less powerful, reducing its fire rate and changing how it targets things. And they increased the prevalence of an AI mechanic called Destroy Area. When a zombie takes fall damage, they'll stop trying to target the player and start trashing the blocks around them but you can stop this mechanic by damaging them while they're in that mode, essentially meaning that with any kind of elevated horde base, you'll absolutely need to use spikes or barbed wire in the early game to catch zombies while they try to break your foundations, and in the late game, blade traps, dart traps, and electric fences, or even turrets, need to be used on elevated designs to slap zombies back into targeting you and not your base. Not to mention the fact that the fun pimps also made it so powered turrets are a lot less likely to hit demo buttons when firing at them. I specified powered turrets because the robotic turret is still a liability on late game horde nights, constantly hitting the button. So if you haven't been using the turrets, or if you use a base which incorporates height in any way, it's time to start using more of those traps. Even just barbed wire and spikes will help you out a lot more than an Alpha 19. Speaking of Alpha 19, bows and crossbows absolutely sucked in Alpha 19, but they were given a huge buff in Alpha 20, with some bows receiving up to a 90% damage increase. With this damage boost, you really don't need much to be able to one-hit kill zombies with a sneak attack, even on the hardest difficulty. A good primitive bow and iron arrows will one-hit most basic zombies on Insane and Survivalist with sneak attack headshots. But it's not just an early game thing. The later bows and crossbows especially can one hit kill ferals and even radiated zombies quite comfortably. Now I know somebody is typing but pre-built they suck on Horde Knight. And first of all, explosive arrows do exist and you should give them a try before you say that. And second of all, I know that without the explosive arrows they do suck on Horde Knight, but that's the thing. You don't have to put any perk points into sneak, agility or archery to achieve this. So you can just use your main weapon on Horde Knight. Crossbows especially are completely OP right now for POI clearing, assuming you know how to do stealth properly. You can just take a good bow or crossbow with no agility perks whatsoever and clear almost any POI without being detected. Now that does get harder and harder as you do harder POIs with radiated zombies and more difficult triggers, but it's still perfectly doable for a non-agility build to take a good compound crossbow with iron or steel bolts and clear a tier 5 without any issues. You know, if you don't suck. Speaking of sucking, number 4 is the drone, which kinda sucked for the start of Alpha 20. It was a bit of a buggy mess, and that isn't 100% fixed, especially in multiplayer. But most of the time, especially in single player these days, it's fairly stable. The drone starts off giving you a base of 16 extra inventory slots, which is all I have to say, go get one, they're useful. I'm kidding of course, because you can also get cargo mods which each give you 8 more inventory slots as well, and yes, they can be stacked. Observe. You'd be surprised how many people tell me with absolute confidence and certainty that you cannot stack those mods. On a completely unrelated note, does reading YouTube comments give anybody else nosebleeds? The drone can also be equipped with a stamina booster for 10% extra stamina regen. Armor plating can also be used to give it more health. And there's also a headlamp if you're into that kind of thing. 
and there is also a medical mod which takes first aid kits and first aid bandages out of the drone's inventory and uses them on you when you take damage. But do note that the healing you get from the drone is not boosted by physician, so if you do have that perk you may want to avoid using this mod. But who am I even kidding, you're all putting 4 cargo mods on it like normal people who touch grass. Speaking of grass, plant fibres can be used to craft number 5, the ghillie suit. Yes, it exists and you can learn to craft the 3 pieces of it by reading 7 volumes of sniper. Once you have it, the jacket takes up a jacket slot, the legs take up the pants slot, and the headpiece naturally takes up the helmet slot. In my opinion, the headpiece isn't that worth it because it replaces a piece of armour, but the jacket and legs are basically a free stealth boost, each reducing visibility and noise generation significantly. These make sneaking considerably more easy and if you're running a stealth build without them, you should really give them a shot because they make you near invisible at night and the noise reduction is extremely helpful a lot of the time as well. On a much less subtle note, number 6 is Molotov Cocktails. One thing that was always missing from my insane nightmare playthroughs was Molotov Cocktails. For a long time I always neglected them, however this is no longer the case. I recently started using them a lot more on that difficulty and they significantly improved the experience. And I don't just mean on Horde Night by the way, I mean throwing molotovs around POIs while cleaning and just waiting for everything on the other side of a door to die. Although they are still useful on Horde Night as well, but I prefer pipe bombs personally. The great thing about molotovs though is that they can be crafted in your inventory on the go. You need cloth, jars, oil and gas, so you'll probably need a wrench to make a lot of them, but once you do have some, they can really make some POIs hilariously easy on any difficulty. Give them a shot and remember to keep some water on you so you can put the fire out if you step into the flames. Before we go into number 7, I want to give you a bonus piece of advice. Patches. Use them. Patches can be put on the floor in doorways to stop zombies moving towards you, but also allowing you to hit them. This can be used on the move with wood and iron hatches being craftable in your inventory or as part of your horde base design. They're an essential part of the game you should definitely know about to help you survive those occasions where a wandering horde has surrounded the building you're in and there's no windows to shoot out of, and is one of the first things I always show new players when I'm playing with them. Also really quickly if you made it this far into this video and are having a good time, why not hit that subscribe button? I've heard that if you cross your fingers while clicking it, YouTube won't charge you for the subscription. But you didn't hear that from me. Anyway, number 7 is decapitations. The decapitation mechanic is a sub mechanic of dismemberment. Every weapon has a dismemberment chance that decides whether or not a given hit will remove a limb from a zombie, which also works on heads. And if you remove the head, they die instantly. This is especially useful on higher difficulties where your base damage is significantly reduced, but it doesn't affect the decapitation chance meaning one of the best way to kill things on insane is to aim for the head and hope for decapitations. What I'm saying here is if you're not already aiming for the head, you should be aiming for the head. It has a chance to one hit kill literally any enemy in the game, from basic zombies all the way up to zombie bears. How do you actually increase decapitation chance? The main way of doing this first of all is to use power attacks because they have a much better chance of dismemberment. On top of the fact that they are actually much more stamina efficient for the damage and stagger that they provide on high difficulties anyway. And to increase the attribute a weapon is governed by, for example clubs are governed by strength, and increasing strength will increase your chance to one shot headshot enemies with strength weapons like sledgehammers, clubs and shotguns. In fact on harder difficulties it can be a lot more worth it to increase your attribute rather than your weapon skill early on, as it will give you more headshot damage across the various weapon types you may have access to, and increase your decapitation chance, and open up higher level perks. All that is of course assuming you're hitting headshots, which if you're not, you really need to start doing it. Decapitations can and will save your life on harder difficulties. So that was 7 plus a bonus thing that you should use more in 7 days to die. But it doesn't end there, why not check out this video on the right where I go over some life saving tips that could help you survive even longer in 7 days to die alpha 20. Thank you to my channel members for making these videos possible and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.